Hey, welcome to Back to Basics. It is still your favorite tutor, Mr. Shadrayo. And look, fellow grade tens, today we are doing functions, right? So looking at this particular question, uh, which is, I think this was a June, right? This was a June paper from the KZN province, right? Now let's see in terms of what is it that we were given here, or rather that we needed to calculate. Let's look at this. Now, uh, they are saying you are given the function of f of x, uh, which uh, is equal to x subtract 2, and you're having g of x, which is same as 3 over x. Now, which are not necessarily drawn into, sc into scale. Now, they are saying a and b are points of intersection of the graphs, right? Now, df, it's the perpendicular, uh, uh, it's perpendicular to the x-axis with point e and f. Uh, of the graph G and also F respectively. Now, the first question requires us to do what? Now, they want us to find out what is going to be the coordinate of your point C, right? So they want us to find out what is going to be the coordinate of your point C. Now, it is important to take note that now point C, firstly, you are finding point C uh, in our straight line graph, right? Can you see that uh, point C it is this one here? We are finding it in our straight line graph here. It is here. Once again, and now when you look at this, can you see that now this is going to, uh, this is going to be your y-intercept, right? And we know that, for an example, for y-intercept, isn't that for y-intercept, uh, you let what? You let x be equals to zero, isn't it, right? So which means there, this is same as y is equals to, where there is x, you write zero, subtract two. And which means now your y-intercept there, this is same as negative 2. But now they said they wanted the coordinate of C, which means your coordinate of C is same as what? It is same as 0 and also negative 2. How to get? Even if, let's say, for an example, you're just looking at the equation of the straight line, this is given by y is equal to mx plus C. And the C in this, it represents your y-intercept. How to get? So for an example, if you now have remembered uh, it, there is no need for actually for us to calculate the y-intercept because it is already given from this particular equation of y is equal to mx plus your c. Oh, it's okay. Now, so let's move swiftly along and see in terms of what else then are you given here. Now, the first question is that they want us to find out what is going to be the equation or the coordinates of a and b, right? They want us to find out what is going to be the coordinates of a and b. Now, how can you find your A and how can you find your B? Now, it is important to note that your A, if let's say, for an example, I'm drawing my graph of uh, G of X, right? So these are my graphs of G of X, right? Now, I want you to take note that point A here, it is the point of intersection and also point B, it is the point of intersection. And in functions, whenever we are looking for point of intersection, you equate the equations, right? You always find the point of intersection when your graph of f of x is equal to the graph of g of x, right? Remember this, it means now these, at this particular point, these two graphs, they share the coordinates. Oh, it's good. So now what is it then that you're going to do now from here? Which means here, this is going to be same as x minus 2. x minus 2 is equal to 3 over what? This is 3 over x. Isn't it so, right? And then now, because we want to get rid of the x in the denominator, right? So we can multiply this side by x, and then we are going to multiply everything on this side by x. So it's okay, right? So when you multiply by x everywhere, now what is that you're going to have, right? So remember, x multiplied by x, this is going to be x squared, and 2 multiplied by a, x is going to be same as negative 2x. And then the x here and these ones, they are going to cancel each other, right? Is equals to 3. Then now from here, which means this is the same as x squared subtract 2x subtract 3 is equal to 0. And now that you have that, now you are going to come back and you are going to factorize, right? And when you factorize, you are going to obviously open your two brackets, right? This is equal to 0. Here you are having your x. And also here you are having your x. You are having your what? This is 3 and 1, isn't it, right? So factors of 3, it's same as 3 and 1. And because now... At the middle term, it is a negative term, right? Negative 2, which means the bigger factor is going to take the sign of the middle term. This is the same as negative. Since the last term it's negative, then this is going to be positive because positive multiplied by negative still gives you negative 3. Let's get. Then now that's going to be like that. And then you are going to equate them, which means this is the same as x plus 1 is equal to 0 or 
x minus 3 is equal to 0. Therefore, which means your x is same as negative 1 or your x is same as positive 3. Note again. So, which means now you see that the negative 1 or rather the negative 1 is going to be the a, which means your coordinate of a is same as negative 1 and also 0. And the coordinate of b is same as what? This is same as 3 and also your 0. Okay, so this is how we basically go about whenever we are given these types of questions. Let's look at the next question and see in terms of what is it then that we can do now from here. Let's just make up our space here. Okay, now uh, let's look at something else. Now, what is that you're having here? Now, they want us to find out what is going to be the length of EF. If OD, right? Now, let me make up my space. Now, they are saying if OD, right? Let me just make up here, right? Now, if they are saying if OD, which one is your OD, right? Now, they are saying if the distance from here to here, it is how many units? It is six units. Not to get, right? So now they want us to find out what is going to be the length of E and F, right? What is going to be the length of E and, uh, e and F, right? And in order for us to find that, right? Now, uh, I want you to look at something. Can you see that this particular line, right? Can you see that this particular uh, perpendicular line, right? Can you see that it passes in both of the equations? Once again, now, so which means now, for an example, if we can go to the graph, firstly, for the function of f of x and, uh, and substitute what? And substitute 6, we can find out what is going to be the coordinate here at f. And then if you can go to the uh, function of what? If you can go to the function of g of x and substitute 6, then we can find out what is the coordinate in here. Now, it's again, so that's the first thing that you are then going to do now from here. We are going to say, look, what is going to be your g of, right? Let's start with f. So we are saying now what is going to be uh, your f of uh, what? This is f of 6, which means this is going to be same as where there is x, I write my 6 subtract 2 and then now what is the answer that i'm going to have here this is same as 4 let's get them and then now from here we are saying now what is going to be the g of 6 right g of 6 is going to be same as this is same as your uh, now uh, remember what was the equation of g right let's just consolidate what was the equation of g it was a uh, 3 over x right which means this is same as 3 over 6 let's get so which means the function here this is same as 1 over 2 right so, which means now the coordinate here, for an example, the coordinate here at this particular point, it's same as what? It is same as 4 and 6, right? This is same as 6 and 4. And then the coordinate here, the coordinate here, it's same as what? This is same as uh, 6 and also 1 over 2. However, because we are looking for the vertical distance in here, right? Can you see then that we are going to say if here, let's say for an example here, it is 4 and then... Uh, what is that you're having here? This is 4. And then here it is 1 over 2, right? Now, what is the distance between the two, right? Can you see then that we are going to say this is same as 4 subtract 1 over 2, which is going to be same as what? This is same as 3,5. Let's get 3,5, which means then your EF, uh, your EF, your EF is going to be given by 3,5 units. Let's get, right? So that's what basically you are going to do whenever you are given such a question. Oh, it's again. Now, I want us to then quickly look at what is going to be a 3.1.4, right? Now, let's just make up our space here. Now, 3.1.4, what is this question requiring us to do? So, for 3.1.4, they are looking for the equation of f or of j of x, right? Now, they are saying, look, I want you to look at these. They are saying, j of x, right? This is j of x. j of x is equal to same as now uh, g of x plus 2, right? So which means now where there is g of x, we are going to write what? We know that g of x is represented by what? We know that this is 3 over x, right? So which means this is same as 3 of x over uh, 3 over x plus 2, which is going to be the new equation of uh, g of x. Now, it's again. So, basically, now, that's what you are going to look at. Right? Now, from here, uh, then let's, let's then look at the last question, right? Now, let's look at the last question. I know mostly the last questions require us to have some form of interpretation of the graph, right? And it is... You know, basically easy to interpret graphs. Let's start and see in terms of how do we go about whenever we are required to interpret here. For an example, here they are looking for the function of f of x 
where it's greater or equals to g of x. Now, where is the function of f of x, right? Now, uh, the function of f of x here, uh, it is this one, right? Now, I want us to have an understanding, right? Where the function of f of x uh, is greater, we are going to uh, reflect it by a what? By this rate. Remember, this is the function of f of x, which is this one, right? Right? This is the function of f of x, and this is also the function of f of x, right? Oh, isn't it? Right? Not, not necessarily. This is the g of x. So, which means our f of x is the straight line, right? The function of f of x is the straight line. The g of x, it is the uh, it is the hyperbole, all right? So, which means now from here, what is that you're going to do? Now, where this graph, it is above. Now, they gave us a condition. They say where x is less or equal to zero. All right, again. So, which means now, what is it that you are not going, what is it that you are going to consider here? All of this part, right? We are not going to consider this part. We are not going to even look at this part because the condition here, they, was, they said where x is less or equals to zero, right? So which means we are going to look for our graph starting from here at zero, moving this way. Now, it's good. now what else then now are you going to do now from here? Uh, now, by looking at the function of uh, g of x, can you see that it has the asymptote at what? At zero, because here, when you're having 3 over x, this is same as plus 0, plus 0, which means now your p and also your q, which is your x and y is asymptote, it is 0 and 0. That's why if you can check here, both of these graphs, they are not intersecting your y asymptote or your x asymptote. How to get, right? So which means now, why, where are we then going to look at now? How to get? Where is the graph of g of x greater? Right? Which means we are going to look at this part, right? Can you see that starting from here, it is above, right? Can you see that this graph here of f of x, it is above, right? It is above continuously up until here. And then there is this uh, particular graph, right? So which means now where is this going to be, right? So which means basically this is where the graph of f of x. Remember when you interpret the graph, you start from your left hand side, you move this way. Okay. And now as you are moving this way, can you see that you find more of the graph of uh, f of x here than the graph of g of x? The graph of g of x is going downward, whereas the graph of f of x is going upward, which means at this particular portion just here, right? This particular graph of what of f of x, it is going to be greater than the graph of g of x. And then how then are you going to write that? So which means this is going to be same as x, the element of real numbers. Can you see that this is going to be in between when x is same as what? Remember the point here that we found for a, it was negative 1 and also 0 because this particular graph of g of x, it's not going to cross this because this is an asymptote. How to get? So that's what basically you are going to end. How to get? So if you are not sure, you can one can still write it this way, right? And remember now, this zero is not going to be included also because this is an asymptote. So because they said also equals, so you can also include here where there is negative one, right? Because it starts from negative one up until zero, but we are not going to include zero because the graph of G of X, it doesn't intersect zero since it is an asymptote. Okay, so that's what you are going to have here. Uh, if you like, you can still write it this way where this is same as negative one and zero, right? And remember this curved bracket, it means... Uh, it means this graph is also having an inclusion sign, whereas this one, there is no inclusion sign, right? Hopefully, all of this makes sense. And whenever we are given such questions, you can be in a position to understand and answer all the questions that they are given, right? Thank you very much for listening.